Hey everyone, welcome back to GameSpot's E3 2019 coverage. I'm Mike Mahardy here as always with Lucy James. Hello. And we are here with Miles Toast from none other than Cyberpunk 2077, uh, senior level designer. And yeah. uh, what a week it's been for you guys so far. Uh, uh, come again? Sorry. I it's couldn't... been quite a week for you guys so far. Um, I think yeah. you surprised yeah. everybody with Keanu Reeves is now in Cyberpunk, <laughs> which of course yeah. I, I expected. I didn't want to say anything before it was that revealed. That happened, though. right? Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I still can't believe it. It's been a crazy, crazy time. I think we approached him just only like about a year ago or so to try to figure this out. And uh, for us, it was always like, him or no one else for the role that we're looking for. So I'm just super excited to see that it actually worked out. Uh, and well, that it didn't leak. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was, that was probably the craziest part. But what was it like going to him? Uh, a, I want to ask you, like, why Keanu Reeves? Um, like, the role we have in mind for him is pretty much the perfect fit, right? Keanu has a rich background when it comes to cyberpunk stories. There's The Matrix, of course. Uh, Johnny... Mnemonic is, is one of the other movies. John Wick itself also has a lot of, you know, like neon and, and, and glam going on in that kind of way, but also a lot of noir, sort of the dark uh, kind of stuff. And so the, the roles he's been playing, they, they really fit to what we're want to, wanting to do with the game. And uh, it just feels like a, like a very natural match, match made in heaven. It's, it's incredible. And so you approached him, and what was his initial reaction to being asked to be in a video game? Because he hasn't really... Obviously, he's a, a star of the screen. What's his experience with games been like, and how did you convince him to uh, be a part of the project? Oh, I uh, oh, I honestly don't know too much about that. I know that, you know, I think this is probably the first big AAA game that he's worked on like this, and, uh, like, from what I've seen, and uh, I've actually met him twice, is... <laughs> amazing like he seems to be very into this uh super cool guy as well very passionate about the project and the role he's playing i remember one <laughs> vivid moment like when when we were first showing that to him like he really got into the role already as we were talking to him just presenting to him like what kind of role we would like him to play and he tried to come like oh maybe johnny he'll be sitting like this or something and he was really getting into it so absolutely absolutely fantastic and of course, he was there at the actual presentation, and he announced the release date, April 16th, 2020. For so long, I think people have been wondering, when is this game going to be a real thing? Finally, you, uh, you got to show it off last year, uh, and then this year you're at the show as well. But we have a release date. It's like a real day we'll get our hands on it. Uh, what's, what's the thinking like with going for the spring? Is that, like, was, is that for enough time for the team? Are you guys confident that the game will be ready by then and good to go by April 16th? Well, that's a bit of a weird question because, I mean, if we wouldn't, then we wouldn't have to announce the release date. I guess our studio um, is one that really puts quality above everything. And uh, it's also reassuring for me as a developer. Like, I know we will not ship this game if it isn't ready by the time we, we uh, decided to ship it. And uh, with that... I think gamers will be able to expect the kind of quality that we had with Witcher 3 uh, and then some, right? Because we too are trying to improve ourselves. We're a bigger studio now, so we can do more. Uh, and yeah, working on this has really shown me like crazy potential that the team back at home really has when realizing a project that is absolutely bonkers like this one. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how our final product looks like. <laughs> So last year at E3, you guys were the talk of the show, uh, kind of came out of a hibernation on the Xbox stage. You had this behind closed doors presentation this year, coming out again with Keanu. But what are you showing at E3? Yeah, um, so we are doing two things this year. We have a public booth uh, somewhere around here. I, I, I reckon, no, I think it's the other building. I'm not quite sure. Um, where we're showing a roughly 25-minute long uh, gameplay presentation to fans who are visiting us today. And then we have a slightly longer version um, that is 50 minutes long for all of the journalists and, uh, and press that we're showing somewhere over there um, behind closed doors. Now, of course, we know that there's a lot of people who want to see this kind of stuff, and we, we have you in your mind, right? Um, but we also need to do our things, and uh, when we're ready to show it, we will. Um, just for now, we need to still, you know us, like, same situation as last year, I guess. Hold on to it for a little bit. 
obviously, uh, Cyberpunk is a drastic departure from CD Projekt's past games, right? It's a, it's, it's, it's still primarily first and foremost an RPG. I know you guys have been stressing that since the beginning. It's also like first person. It's a shooter. It's very futuristic. What's it like tackling all these new challenges of the Cyberpunk, especially? Now that you have a release date, now that it's a real thing, what's it like as a level designer specifically making this new conglomeration of genres? Uh, daunting, yeah. <laughs> crazy, but also fun. Um, I mean, I guess the biggest change that we have, and that's also for us as level designers, puts like a lot of challenge are actually it's two things. First off, the switch to first person, right? Um, because you perceive the world very differently than Geralt does. And that's also like in part due to, a very, due to a very simple change, which is the camera is now at a different distance to you as the player. So when the player moves into a room as Geralt, you are really only into the room, uh, in the room when the camera is entered as well. Uh, with Cyberpunk in the first person, you enter the room pretty much straight away, right? So the, we can work with different scales of, of buildings and in which we, we always needed to sort of accommodate that. Um, and these are just like smaller things that affect it, but in the grand scheme of things, they have a larger ripple effect on how we have to build the world. We can move faster than Geralt ever could. So that means it, like 10 seconds of walking is different in Witcher 3 than it is in, in Cyberpunk, right? Because we can double jump. Roach can never get the speed that a car could, right? So, um, you know, when you breeze 10 minutes in, in the, with a car, it's a very different distance than with Roach, but we want to compensate it because in quests, we think about pacing a lot. We, we think about it in metrics where you go, okay, maybe here, this bit, you have 10 seconds of just calm, where you get to enjoy the world or whatever, and these 10 seconds look very differently between Witcher 3 and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Cyberpunk, after all. And of course, then we have the whole verticality, right? We've shown last year the mega building, and uh, if we look at it from a top-down perspective, it might have one size, right, that might look small, but when we look at all the individual layers that we can get with the elevator, things start to, be, to look very, very differently, right? And also, it gives you a very different sense of scale when you walk through the jungles of, the city jungles of Night City and you have these huge skyscrapers around you, it really makes you feel tiny. And when it comes to the scale of the game, how do you choose what to show at a convention like E3? And obviously later, later on when you guys released that gameplay last year, how do you decide what's best representative of Cyberpunk? And what are you bringing this year that is a little different to what we saw last year? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, yeah, actually, was something that we tried to do is, of course, with the first demo, we tried to show people as much of our world as we could because Cyberpunk wasn't you know, announced then, and we really wanted to give people a good idea of what our vision of Cyberpunk 2077 looked like. So we put in a little slice of X everything. We had the, the huge cityscapes. We had a bit of uh, more industrial areas. So. This time around, we're taking a bit more focused look. We're going uh, into a very different district called Pacifica. It's a district that had high ambitions uh, as a tourist hotspot in the world, but due to global economy, investors pulled all funding, resulting in most of the uh, district nowadays being in ruin. It's actually one of the most dangerous places in Night City to be in. Um, as such, it's also much more deserted by people compared to other parts of the city, like Watson that we showed last year, simply because people don't really go there when they don't have to, at the risk of being shot on the, on the street, right? It's an area where the government and the corporations have lost all control over. Um, and our approach with these kind of things is between the districts that we have and why we chose this district specifically, uh, we want to showcase that even though we are in one city, the variety of places you can visit is still quite high. And we always keep in mind the difference we have uh, had in Witcher 3 between Stelige and Novigrad, for example. It was quite astonishing in terms of architecture, the people, the culture they had, and even the quests you would experience there, the monsters you would encounter. And we have the kind of same ambitions with uh, these districts. So again, we're showing a very different part of the city um, to highlight this variety. Has, have you had to like workshop how quests unfold much more like since The Witcher? Like I think The Witcher like it unfolds in a more traditional sense. You talk to this person, you get a quest. You talk to this next person. Yeah, you can make choices. But based on the demo we saw at uh, E3 last year, 
it seemed like there were a lot of more branching paths you could take. I'm curious if you had to rethink your quest structure oh. at all for Cyberpunk. Oh, yeah, I can get into some really juicy details here. <laughs> like, for us, um, you know, with Witcher 3, what we did is sort of take an, uh, a packing open world where you can really go and uh, explore and marry that to a gripping narrative, something, you know, like that wasn't really done before. It was really high, um, highly ambitious project. And this time we want to do this, but take it another step further by adding a third pillar, if you will, which is freedom of gameplay. Um, and that, of course, also affects our quest. So the way we envision this is you get to play V, your own character, right? It's first person. We allow you to fully customize your character, not only your appearance, the gender you want to play, but also your life path. So that means for us you get to decide the background story of your character. Uh, did you grow up on the streets? Or maybe you've left behind a corporate career, very different kinds of having lived a life, you might agree. And uh, this will also, uh, this, your, your, your appearance and the attribute points you in, invest, like uh, do you have a lot of cool, right? Do you have a lot of uh, strength, whatever, are things that will affect your game. They will manifest in ways that maybe you'll get additional dialogue options because of this. Because you grow up on the streets, you can relate to gangs like the Maelstromers or the Voodoo Boys very differently than a corporate guy might have. So you unlock additional dialogue options that you can use to role-play your character. Maybe because of your strength, you can intimidate the guy better, right? Like, so there's additional choices you get here. And it goes even further this time around where effectively, we call it your perks, um, but you can imagine it as sort of your talents, right? Those are included into your conversations as well. So if you have a high engineering skill, you might be able to talk shop with another guy that uh, is all about tech, right? Or you can identify uh, like high-tech military gear simply by looking at it because you have a high expertise on that. So the world reflects these kind of things and acknowledges it, and it really allows you uh, that sounds a bit buzzwordy, but it really is true to engage into the ultimate role-playing fantasy. You come up with your character, um, how do you look like, what do you want to do? I guess we can name the example of a cyber ninja. Maybe you want to play a cyber ninja, right? So what do you do? You invest your skills, right? Maybe into reflexes that allows you to unlock the blades perk. So you can get a mono katana and have like strong melee skill. Um, you choose to have grown up as a street kid because that's your background, right? And uh, you invest your attribute points, root points accordingly. You dress accordingly. You make a character look like a cyber ninja, and then you play him by like a cyber ninja. You choose to do a stealth approach. You can play the game completely non-lethally or take people out for the shadows or go in guns blazing. In fact, you can play the entire game without killing a single enemy. It might not be easy, but, you know, the game is really all about you fulfilling your role-playing fantasy. You come up with a character and you play it. So would you say in a sense that, like, although The Witcher 3 is an RPG and Cyberpunk 2077 are an RPG, they're almost those two kind of extreme polar opposite RPGs. One, you're playing the role of Geralt. This one, you're playing any role you want. Yes, pretty much. Um, and that's really, really important for us. We always wanted our games to be super immersive, but the difference really is like, whereas in one world we're following as an observer, this time it's you, right? In the form of V, the character you play. Um, which is partially what we do to maintain a high level of the uh, quality when it comes to how we ex uh, d tell our stories, right? Because we're storytellers first and foremost. That is really important to us, but... Uh, this time around, again, freedom of gameplay is, is really what we're all about. And uh, that's why I'm super excited to see that when the game plays out, like what players will be able or are going to do with the tools that we give them to, to basically make their own characters. This is a <clears throat> Sorry, this is a very loaded question I want to end on. But uh, because like the CD Projekt's past portfolio is so different from what you're doing with this, what is it that, if you could sum it briefly, what is it that makes Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk and a CD Projekt RPG? Oh. <laughs> the ambition with it. I guess we have been always really ambitious with our projects, and I think you can see that in the jumps of quality between Witcher 1, Witcher 2, Witcher 3, and hopefully also Cyberpunk. Even in the expansions of Witcher 3, we always try to improve and become better and take the formula one step further. And, you know, 
like really, if you look at the way we do character custom, we're not just satisfied with the idea that, yeah, we give you a little bit of dialogue options extra depending on your background or whatever. We want to take it really further. When we say freedom of gameplay, it really is a pillar that translates to all areas of the game, right? And we want the game to really reflect you in a way and this to be really much your story and at the end of the game when you finish it you should feel like this was my adventure this was really cool maybe i'll start again and do another and see how that goes out right and i think that is sort of part of the core dna of what makes a, a cd project rpg awesome i know it's a difficult question but i appreciate you answering <laughs> miles unfortunately we are out of time which is a huge bummer because i think we could talk for hours and hours about cyberpunk Absolutely. <laughs> yeah but i'm looking forward to seeing it later this week yeah me too april 16th 2020 Yes, can't wait. We're playing Cyberpunk 2077. Thank you so much for joining us, Miles. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, Lucy and I are going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. The stream is still going to be live with a bunch of our impressions from the most recent hardware, games, etc., uh, all across GameSpot. So stick around. We're going to be back in a little bit with Gears 5. We'll see you then.